going to read you uh, a couple pages from The Deep, which basically uh, takes place on a at a research station, eight miles underneath the, the water at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. And the section I'm going to read you is Luke, who is the protagonist, and Alice, or Al, who is kind of a Navy consort who has brought him down to the station. And they've got to go through a very small aperture, uh, basically a tunnel, uh, in, the, in the station to get from one side or to the other. There's something down here, Al said, knocking her fist around. Yeah, it's same as a crawl through, really, but it feels even smaller. It's an access chute, I'd say. Could be that the air passes through a series of filters or whatever above the chute. I really don't remember the schematics. Luke said, can we get through it? We'll have to wriggle and pray there's no grate at the other end. But yeah, I think it's doable. And it's the only way into the purification room. You sure? Yeah, she said. That I do remember from the schematics. And there's absolutely no other... Doc, hey, she said, cutting him off. Not trying to be an asshole here, but this is it. No alternative. Okay. Luke bent to the shaky breath. Fine, fine. Al's body bumped into the tube. Her elbows and knees made no noise at all. It was as if she were crawling through a hole carved into a mountainside. You coming, Luke? He knelt. His knees and feet were pressed tightly together, the knobs of his ankle bones touching. It felt as though the tunnel behind him was no longer an O, but had somehow been crimped into a V, a pair of jaws closing by degrees, forcing him forward if he didn't want to be crushed. The air changed as they entered the chute, heavier, sickeningly moist. He worked his way forward on his belly, bucking his hips in a clumsy, kind of humping motion. Dig those moves, he said, hoping the sound of his voice might drive away the onrushing panic. Liquid hips, baby, just keep up those liquid hips. The tube reduced his voice to a hysterical warble. After a few feet, his arms were pinned straight to his sides. He could barely move them other than to spider crawl his fingers along the inside of the chute. How the hell was Al managing to do the same with her broken wrist? She was smaller than Luke, more nimble. The tube was coated in a thin layer of oil, but instead of making it easier to move, as it did in the crawl-through chute, it had the opposite effect. Luke felt like an insect gummed on a strip of flypaper. Al, he called out. Hey, Al. When the re reply finally arrived, it held this funny echo. Luke, ook, ook. He wriggled forward, his breath coming in hot gasps. He adopted this peristaltic wave, the way a maggot gets around. Toes, then calves, then thighs, then ass, then hips. This movement netted a few inches at a go. Al grunted in exertion somewhere ahead. The chute tightened as Luke forged deeper into it. His nose raked the metal, which was pebbled with rough bumps. Luke envisioned a huge, greasy tongue covered with disease nodules. It's okay, 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 okay. Even the voices in, in his head sounded hysterical now. Al's made it through already. You can bet she's already waiting in the purification room. You just need to get a few more feet and you'll be there too. His shoulders jammed. Pushing with his heels did nothing, nothing at all. He was stuck, his body pinned. He couldn't budge. His heels drummed a helpless tat-a-tat. -tat. His lungs constricted as the darkness poured straight into them. Was the chute shrinking? It pressed on the back of his skull with an insistent, menacing weight. It would keep pressing slowly and remorselessly until the bones of his face collapsed. It's a bend, Luke, his mind yammered. Just a little bend in the tube, for God's sakes. And suddenly he felt it. The chute was pressing into his right-hand side, but there was a little space, just a little space on his left. Luke torqued his elbows and bucked his hips, squirming onto his side. His spine followed the bend of the tube now. He could breathe shallowly once again. He pushed against the chute with his feet, which slipped on its greasy coating. Incrementally, fighting for inches, he propelled his torso around the bend. The air before his eyes burst with cottony puffs of light. Those puffs were a manifestation of exertion, of panic, and a lack of breathable air. He was gasping now, the onset of a claustrophobic attack. 
And you know, he'd never been prone to that. Crowded elevators and windowless rooms had never bothered him. But now he was eight miles underwater. Eight miles, eight miles, his mind parroted idiotically, in a chute that felt like it was being compressed in a vice. The sea was held back by nothing more than that fragile shell. He heard, or believed he could hear, the subtlest creaks as water exerted its bone-smashing force. Except it wouldn't smash his bones, would it? No, it would do something else entirely. He'd be crushed into a cube like a car at a wrecking yard. It was highly unlikely that his body would be compressed into anything so neatly geometric, but that was the image his mind settled around. He wriggled his shoulders, clenched his fist, and inched onward. He was bathed in sick sweat, his thighs chafed. He couldn't hinge his knees more than a few inches. Why had he done this? How could he have been such a goddamn fool? It was torturous to bleed breathe. Were his sinuses somehow constricting? What if the chute narrowed until he couldn't move another millimeter? What if he caught up to Al, who'd gotten stuck herself, her head butting into his heels? What if, what if she told him the exit was graded? Could they get out? Luke didn't think so. Moving forward was hard enough. Moving backward would be impossible. They would die in the chutes like rats trapped in a heating duct. Whoosh, whoosh. This sound floated out of the darkness, dancing delicately up his calves, slipping around his skull and into his ears. Whoosh, whoosh that insistent, unpleasantly familiar sound. No, 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 no! He was nearly around the bend in the chute. He'd been progressing in centimeters, in millimeters, in millipedes, in the smallest increments. But he was making headway. His hips were clear. In a minute or so, he'd be able to work around the bend and really boogie. But something was inside the chute with him now. Whoosh, ticka, 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 whoosh, whoosh. He could picture it behind him. Twenty feet long, thick and sinuous, its feelers dancing lightly along the mouth of the tube, its exoskeletons throbbing with moody colors. Under that armor, its guts were soft and featureless as mashed bananas, its compound eyes pulsating with alien hunger. The millipede was inside the chute with them, its million skillion legs tapping as it advanced gradually but with complete ease. Tubes were its natural habitat, weren't they? Luke tensed, every muscle quivering. His heart hammered at his rib cage, and fear paralyzed him. Finally, he began to move, hips bucking, feet shoving. But his body was uselessly accordioned. He felt like a worm stuck in the barrel of a clear, cheap ballpoint pen. Panic chewed in his brain into a pulp, rendering him stupid with fear. Bug! yelped a giddy voice from his littered brain lizard brain, obliterating every last vestige of calm. Bug, 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 bug! And he felt it now at his feet, its antennae, long and thick as extension cords, picking, picking along the exposed skin of his ankles. Its mandibles, gnashing like scissors. Its proboscis was a thick needle dripping venom. Would it punch through the soles of his shoes, injecting poison into the pads of his feet while he thrashed helplessly? Would that poison kill him or only paralyze him? Would he feel it chewing through his boots, snipping off his toes like jujubes and funneling them into the clotted hole of his mouth? The sound switched direction. It was coming from ahead of him now somehow. Oh Jesus, oh God, no. His feet would be bad enough, but for, him to, for it to devour his head, its legs twitching through his hair as it scuttled over his forehead, his face carrying the insectile stink of a roach nest, Noxious nectars drooling out of its mouth as its mandibles fastened around the fragile nut of his skull, its proboscis injected through one twitching eyeball. Luke shook all over, screeching now, gripped by an out-of-body terror. A vein of white-hot fire ripped up his spine as its overtaxed overtax synapses detonated in his brain pan. Fingers, feelers. Something was gripping his shoulders and hauling him out into the end. Thank you. <laughs>